The Ad Show. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another sales update. Now, I've been getting a little bit antsy because I've not recorded a video in a whole 24 hours. I know, it's crazy, it's crazy. I can't keep away from YouTube for that long. So, I need to do this video. I'm gonna relish this video, I'm gonna relish these sales together. And uh, without further ado, we are gonna get on with this. You can see the first sale here, uh, which is up on the screen now. Lego Brickheads Captain America 2017 41589, uh, brand new in box. The box did have slight damage, so I didn't actually send this one into Amazon. You see that on the top possibly on another couple of photos here. There we go, you can see the little dent on there and it's near the top there. Um, so yeah, I didn't send this into Amazon. However, if I had sent it into Amazon, I think I would have got around 28 quid for it. Or if that was like brand new without any box damage. So with box damage, I probably would have got, I don't know, 23, 24 quid, maybe 25 quid like I've got on eBay here. But around that anyway. So to be honest, I'm pretty glad I sold this on eBay because I got the same or possibly even a little bit more on eBay for this, for this item. I was getting these brick heads either a year ago or two years ago um, in sort of between 20 and 40% off sales. So this one might have cost me six quid or it might have cost me sort of eight quid, but it would have been no more than eight quid. It's just kind of stayed in my lockup with all the Lego for quite a while now and I pulled it out and yeah just whacked it on and uh, it got 25 quid pretty quickly so I was uh, happy with that also this video this um was in the video the stock video I think it's episode three of the ad show if you go in the little playlist uh, the ad show series one it's the one with the thumbnail where it says stock anyway can't remember whether it's the third show or the fourth show but I think it's the third show so if you want to see this along with a load of other Lego RA stock and all that sort of stuff go and check out that video in that playlist and while you're there just go through all the other shows and you know one put me watch time for me Cheers, thank you very much. Anyway, uh, so on to the next one here. We've got this large vintage brass jam pan with uh, metal handle. Nice little bit of patina on this one as well to the outside. It's just, it's really, really nice. So it's uh, just a nice little aesthetic to this. Um, it's got just the wear in the right places and stuff. It looks a little bit used, but again, it doesn't look like it's been torn to shreds or anything like that. Um, so it's just got that nice level of wear or patina on it. Um, now, I didn't actually get 24 99 for this. Um, you know, a few years ago, you could possibly get more than this for the jam pans and stuff. But I found over the last year, there's been a bit of a decline in them for me. I don't know why. Well, I say decline. Actually, there was a few month uh, period where I was selling quite a lot of them. But maybe the last six months or so, there's been a bit of a decline in them. But that's just from my experience. And to be honest, I've not had as many of these come through the door over this year as I would have done maybe a year or two ago. So that obviously has a massive impact. So um, yeah, anyway, I didn't get 24 99 for this. I accepted an offer of 20 quid plus the postage. I've sold, I think the highest price I've sold a jam pan for is around 30 quid plus my postage. But generally what I've found, about 25 quid is about where you're gonna where you're gonna be on these jam pans. If for a you know, nice example, the heavy, the fairly large one as well. Um, I don't know whether people have them for planters or whether people actually use them for jam or what whatever it may be or some sort of flower display or something i don't know i suppose there's many many things you could you could use them for but yeah that's that one there anyway this one i will have got an auction job i'll probably paid three or four quid for it you know expressed in an individual cost as part of one of those box job lots so not really a lot of cost involved with it for me next we've got this vintage large studio pottery stoneware pedestal planter charger 24.99 plus my postage of this one now i'm thinking this one came in an auction job lot, but I can't be a hook. Actually, no, I do know now. I, I It's just come to me then, as I was saying, auction job lot. Yeah, it definitely did come in an auction job lot, this one. Previously, I was just about to state, um, but I don't know whether it might have come from a charity shop, but I was leaning towards more auction job lot, but now, I actually, it just came to me then. I remember the actual specific job lot that this was in. It was a job lot where I had quite a few large um, sort of studio pottery bowls like these, Real, really big ones, you know, big, big bowls. This one particular was 32, 33 centimetres. This wasn't actually the biggest one of the lot. Um, but really, really big bowls. 
And I maybe got five or six of them in the job lot for £10 plus commission. No one really wanted them or anything. Because, to be honest, a lot of these studio balls, they're quite slow. Um, you know, you can't get huge, huge money from them or anything. So, so a lot of the dealers and the other resellers, when they're at auctions, you tend to ignore them. And I don't ignore them because I know there's some money there to be had, even though it might take a little longer to sell. Um, but you can see here, I've got 24 99 plus my postage on this one. So they do sell and they do get good money. It does just take a few months for for them to go possibly about I don't know three to six months something like that maybe a little bit more to the end of that time scale so maybe five or six months so it does take a while to go but within the kind of collectibles way uh, you know with collectibles niche three to six months is actually quite a short time scale I mean there's many many people I know who uh, you know sell antiques and collectibles and stuff who've had things on for you know a year two years etc and just kind of wait for that white buyer to come along so yeah this one will probably cost me about two quid uh, expressed as an individual cost from that job that I was talking about so two quid something like that into 25 quid plus my postage I'm more than happy with that and to be honest on something like this I'm happy to wait a little bit you know I'm happy to wait a few months for it to go because um, it was a decent margin it anyway uh, next we've got this classic dot two BBC collectible action figure the claws of Axos M monster alien here I think I must have had this up originally at like twenty nine ninety nine or maybe a little bit higher than that, and then somehow it's got reduced down to twenty nine pound oh nine. I must have done maybe a five percent reduction in the bulk editor at some point. I don't know, and then it's obviously take, taking it down to just that random price. Like sometimes uh, we've had sales on these updates at, at these random prices. But yeah, this came in a classic Doctor Two job. Like I paid quite a lot for it. I think I paid one hundred and fifty quid or something for it. Was it was a hundred quid? It was maybe between 100 and 150, it might have been 130 or something, I'm not sure, but it was around that range. I was getting quite a few uh, Doc 2 job lots and stuff, so I can't remember specific prices of the various different job lots that I was getting. But I do know that a lot of the items out of this job lot have sold now, and that this will be pure profit after posting fees. So, 2909 for this one I got. Um, I got uh, Sea Devil in there, I got John Pertwee in there, I got pr pretty much all the, all the different Doctors, or a lot of the different Doctors, um, I think it's from the uh, 12 Doctor Collectors set or something, which is actually, it might be titled something slightly different to that, but that set that I'm thinking of is worth quite a, quite a little bit of money because you've got all the different Doctors in there and accessories and stuff, and I had quite a few of the Doctors out of that set. So, um, you know, I think Paul McGann, doc that Doctor, sold for about 20 quid for me. The John Pert, uh, sorry, the Win William Hartnell one, sold for maybe about 17, 18, 19 quid for me. I had a Tom Baker that sold. I had loads of different monsters in there, as I say, Sea Devil and all the rest of it. So, yeah, I made some good money off that. Um, and the guy actually um, who I purchased it, purchased it off was very kind to kind of let me have it for a better price than he originally had it up at. So, yeah, that was quite nice of him as well. So, yeah, that was that one there. Uh, next, we've got a Lego Speed Champion 75871. Ford Mustang GT new sealed box. Now there was a little bit of box damage to this, probably only very slight. Oh yeah, you can see there, just a very, very, very slight indentation to the box. But I didn't send it into Amazon, I just sold it on eBay in particular, this one. And I still got 45 quid. Now on Amazon, brand new and sealed, if I was sending this to Amazon, I'd do it probably like new, something like that. I'd even be tempted to do used very good. But, you know, use very good light new, something like that, I'd specify the condition as. But that would mean I'd have to kind of reduce the price a little bit so then it would get it to sell. So I'd probably end up taking about 40 quid for it on Amazon, even though brand new and sealed would be at 50 quid. Um, but obviously, because I'm not specifying it as brand new, I'd have to take that lower price. So I've actually done really, really well on eBay to get 45 quid for this, even with a slight little bit of box damage. So yeah, really, really happy with that. I was picking these up at retail price about a couple of years ago now, so I've had these for quite a while. I did sell quite a lot of them last year though as well, so I, I recouped quite a lot of my money and made a bit of money on them last year as well. In fact, I think I had 15 in total, and I think I sold 10 last year at around the 50 quid, and then obviously I kept five back for this year. So I was probably in profit. If I worked it out in my head now, which I'm not going to do because it would take forever, and we've got a few more sales to, to actually look at here, but uh, if I worked it out in my head, I would have been that kind of profit on the 50 pound for each of the 10 would have probably made me in profit for all the 15, and then these ones obviously are basically pure profit after posting fees. But I'd have to you know, run the calculations properly in my head 
But I think that, yeah, that would be right. And therefore, these five will be just pure profit now. So, yeah, really, really happy with that. And, uh, yeah, nice little item. And if you pick up some Lego, if you're confident picking it up and you get it for a decent price, or even if you get it for retail, but you have a very, very solid idea that it's going to go up in future, uh, and it does go up in future, you can make some seriously good money. Like, really, really good money. Imagine, so these... Uh, went up to 50 quid after about a year of retiring. So imagine if you sunk like a 1,300 into these, which would get you a hundred of them at retail price, and then they went up to 50 quid. You know, you've made yourself a, a few grand, even like net profit, you've made yourself a few grand there within a year. I mean, and that's just getting a hundred and that's just sinking 1,300 in. Now, granted, that's a lot of money for most people to sink into an investment. But imagine if someone had a bit of money, like, you know, a real bit of money lying around and sunk 13 grand into them, you know. I mean, yeah, you wouldn't go all on one set. But, you know, you'd vary it over, the, you know, loads of different sets. But even so, you'd still come out with a really good net profit average if you knew what you were doing. So, yeah, you know, that's why I like Lego investing. And it is kind of overlooked. But at the moment, it's not as good as it once was. I mean, certainly it wasn't as good as early sort of 2010s. But it's even now, I feel, it's getting harder um, from even just a couple of years ago. It just continually seems to be getting harder with, with the Lego investing. But still, something that I still get myself involved with because I do very much enjoy it. So, that's that one there anyway. Next, we've got this vintage Robert Ollie 8x bronze resin plaque sculptures. Now, these actually came to me in a box job lot from an auction. I paid about 20... I think it was £25 plus commission for this job lot. There was other things in there as well, but I saw these plaques. And there was also another two larger Robert Ollie plaques I think I sold not long ago can't remember what I got from maybe 25 or something for them um, and then I'd say other bits and bobs miscellaneous stuff but will have got me a bit of money back on the job lot as well um, but these ones these specific plaques here eight of them I just bundled them up because I didn't want to deal with them individually I probably could have sold them individually for I don't know, six, seven quid plus postage or something something like that anyway. But I wasn't going to do that. I was going to bundle them all up, whack them on at 60 quid. And eventually, after a few months, it's one of those items that you need to find the right buyer for. But they did sell for 60 quid plus my postage. And of course, that um, obviously makes me in profit on the entire job lot, if I wasn't already, which I probably was uh, from the other stuff selling. Um, but even so... Uh, that takes me well into profit and anything else that I've sold prior or, or, or in the future is just basically more profit. So, yeah, really, really nice. And again, it's another example time and time and again. I proved this and other people proved this on the sales updates that buying from auction can be very, very lucrative. If you pick up a box for a tenner, you can easily turn it into 50, 60 quid. If not in some circumstances, turn it into 100 quid, 150 quid in terms of sales value at least. But even net profit on that is, is it's a decent amount of, uh, of your money back. It's like three, four, five, six times your money or something net profit. So yeah, time and time again, myself and other people prove that going to auction, you, you know, you definitely want to look into it. It's a good thing to do if you've got a local auction to yourself. Um, but yeah, anyway, next we've got just a bread and butter sale here. 12 times official WSSA pink speed stacks uh, with carry bag here. I've picked these up quite a few times. You generally only get around 10 quid plus post for these. You might be lucky and get 12 99 plus your postage just for this standard kind of set. Um, but yeah, I mean, I still pick them up if for a quid or two, something like that. I'll pick them up at a charity shop. I think I got these at a charity shop for two quid. These cost me, I believe. Uh, so yeah, two quid into a tenner plus post. It's a nice little bread and butter uh, item there. Like nice little bread and butter margin. Um, probably, I don't know, five or six quid net profit on them. But, you know, it's something that keeps things ticking over as well. So they sold there. Just a very bread and butter item. Uh, vintage green, yellow, ceramic glaze rectangular sandwich uh, tray. Now, I think I got this quite recently, but I can't remember what I paid for it. When I say recently, I'm, I mean maybe the last couple of months or something. But I can't remember exactly what I paid for it. I think I got it from a charity shop. Ah, uh, in fact, I do remember it was from, yeah, I think it was from Age UK. I think it was two or three pound. It was no more than three quid. It possibly was two quid. Uh, and yeah, I did get it actually quite recently. But I get so much stuff coming through, I forget certain things that come in and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, you know, things just go out of my brain like like in a snap of her fingers it's crazy um because of so much stuff coming in and then so much stuff selling and that sort of stuff 
But um, 14 99 for this, plus my postage, from 2 or 3 quid, nice little margin on that. Uh, you know, again, bread and butter item, but something that I'm always going to pick up, so long as there's a bit of money still uh, in it. So yeah, that's that one. Next, we've got this LEGO Spider-Man 76005 Daily Bugle Showdown Retired Seal Set. I think this was from 2013, this set. I showed it in uh, that video that I was talking about, that ad show, episode uh, 3, uh, that I was talking about before with the other LEGO set that I was talking about. And, um, yeah, I showed this there, and I said that I've got it listed for fifty nine ninety nine, and it did sell for that. It didn't take too long, only a few weeks, so I was really, really happy with that. I actually got this from a Lego job lot that I'm in profit on, so, yeah, really, really happy with this one. Nice little bit of money in. It's always good to, obviously, uh, you know, when you've put things away for a while, and then you get them out, and you list them, it's always good, and it's always nice to kind of uh, get a little bit of money in from them that you may have had tied up in them for a while or maybe they've just kind of come from a job lot that you've been in profit on but you've just kind of left them to the side for a rainy day or for a slow, so, slow sales period uh, and that's what I did and it was nice to, to get that sale so that was a nice little sale and then finally we've got these Lego Halloween Haunt 4260 brand new in sealed box these are little kind of uh, I think we call them vignette sets uh, I think Lego call these vignette sets anyway uh, and I sold all four of these that I showed in that same video that I've been going on about I saw, uh, yeah, I sold all four of these, um, sort of around Halloween. Actually, one or two of these went after Halloween, which was odd because I thought, hang on, it's, it, it, Halloween's already been and gone, yet someone's purchasing these. But yeah, most of them, I think three out of the four sold before Halloween. Uh, and yeah, for the fourteen ninety nine, I was thinking I was going to get. So that was pretty cool. I don't know whether I said... $14.99 in the video or $15.99, something around that I said anyway. But for my $14.99, they cost me £4 in Asda, uh, maybe last Halloween or just after last Halloween when we were on the reduced section. Um, so yeah, I waited a while for these, I just had them in my lockup and, uh, you know, a little bit of a margin, not a huge margin because obviously it's RA, it's retail arbitrage, so it's not as good as charity shop or auction margins as I've mentioned many, many times before. But still, £4 into 15 quid from it for an RA item is a very very strong margin so yeah really really happy with those nice little bread and butter item again and i'm glad that they all sold within the region of halloween because otherwise i would have had to wait and wait and wait because they're probably not going to be picked off um throughout the year or, or towards christmas or anything they might have done but uh, you know it's very very specific items these you know they're very specific towards halloween so if they didn't go around halloween I would have been stuck with them for a little bit, no doubt. So, anyway, with that being said, that is all the sales. So, thank you very much for joining me. Um, if you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing. If you would, please like the video. If you did like it, then please do so, because that helps me out quite a lot. And, uh, yeah, if you've got any com comments, questions, and queries, as always, please do feel free to drop them down below. As well as video ideas or things you'd like to see on the channel, anything like that, drop those down below as well. And I will see you in the next one. So, see you very soon guys and your love is mine your love is mine to capture in the spine teacher how to a thing like that in high school I tell you I've had to learn that myself opt was a hard business <laughs>